Hi, PowerPoint animation is awesome, but it also comes with its own set of frustrations. Let's discuss five of the most common frustrations with PowerPoint animation and their solutions. Let's jump right in. The first one is the common multiple animations goof up. This is the first thing that frustrated me when I started working with PowerPoint animations. Let me show you what it is. Let's say I want this star to move from here to here. While it does, I also want it to change its color. Let's see the steps involved. Let me take this, go to the animations pane, go to the motion paths and make it go to the right. Let me place it somewhere over here. Now I want to apply the second animation to the same object. As a beginner, the first place where I would choose to apply my custom animation is from this panel, isn't it? So I go here and say object color and then change it to maybe this green color. Now when I go to slideshow, I see that there is just one animation here. Ideally, I should have had two animations applied on this, isn't it? Now that is where most beginners fail. So here is the right way to do it. Let me delete this. First, you apply your first animation by going here, motion paths, and then say to the right and then place it wherever you want. For the second animation event, you should always use this option here called add animation and then choose from the animation sets that are available here. You make the change like say object color and like the way that you did earlier, you change the color and you can see that this animation event happens. Of course, you need to match the timing. So let us select both of these while holding the shift button down and say both of them have one second duration and we need to have the second one happen with previous. Now, when I go to slideshow, this is how the animation happens. So when you apply multiple animations to the same object, from the second animation onwards, you need to use the option under add animation rather than this default animation gallery. Now that brings us to the second issue, which is the tricky smooth start shocker. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let us continue with the same animated object, but this time let us change the animation. Let us increase the duration of both of these so you can clearly see the issue. And let us go to the second animation and change it to the spin animation. You need to go to this animation gallery after selecting that particular animation event. Now let me go here and change this from the object color to spin animation. All right. Now let us see how this animation plays out by going to slideshow. On a click, you can see this is the way the star spins. If you see, there is something wrong about the way the star spins. You can see this. It spins a little bit initially and then it kind of lazily moves around and then it spins here after stopping. Now that is not the result we want. We want it to spin continuously. But why does this coordination issue seem to happen? It is because PowerPoint has applied its own mind and added a default smooth start and smooth stop to your animation. And that has messed up the whole animation event. Now, there is a bit of trick even inside that. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here is the animation event, which is the spin event, which seems to be messed up. So probably you might think that the issue is with this event. So you go to the drop down menu, go to effect options. Here you see that there is no problem of smooth start and smooth end. Now you might think everything is right. Now, where am I going wrong? You need to go a bit deeper and go to the first animation event and go to effect options. You see that smooth start and smooth end has been applied to one of these animations. So you need to go back to this and make it into zero and say, okay, that is when the animation plays okay. Now let us go to the slideshow and see how this one plays. On a click, you can see that the star continuously spins all through the distance and it looks perfect. Let's go to the third frustration in using PowerPoint animation. But before that, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com, the creator of Ram Gopal's PowerPoint Mastery Program, a comprehensive and creative PowerPoint training program for professionals. The third issue is the great grouping and ungrouping disaster. To practically demonstrate the issue, let me take up one of the templates from our comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle. On a click, you can see that the opportunity is closed and is bolted. And then you can give your reasons here. On a click, it gets opened up and then the opportunity opens up and then you can provide your answer and explanation here. When I hit escape, let me ungroup one of these elements 
by using control shift G option, you can see that the ungrouping has happened. Along with that, the animation event corresponding to that grouping and ungrouping is also gone. Now when I go to slideshow, this is how the animation plays. Everything gets messed up. So when you use PowerPoint animation, remember, once you animate a group, you will lose the animation when you ungroup it. The same way, when two elements are animated and you group them after animating them, then you lose the animation. So make up your mind clearly before grouping or ungrouping and animating those objects. I call the fourth frustration the strange title grouping non-starter. Now this is something that I have not been able to understand at all. Why on earth is it not possible for me to group a slide title and the element on the slide? Let me show you what I mean by that. I can apply animation to this. I can apply animation to this. But if I want to apply custom animation by grouping the element on the body of the slide and the slide title, I cannot do it. Let me select this, hold the shift button down and select this. Both of them get selected. But if I want to group it by right clicking and using the group option, you can see that there is no such option. Even if you use the shortcut called Ctrl G, there is no use. So remember for some weird reason, you cannot group a title and an object on your slide, leave alone applying custom animation to it. The last frustration for the day is the pesky percentage delay in text animation. Now here is my list of beautiful bullet points. I want to apply custom animation to them. So let me select all of them, go to animations tab and apply a simple wipe animation from left and all of them start on click. So far, so good. Now, I want this animation to happen in such a way that one word is revealed at a time. Is there a way that I can do it? Of course there is. When I go to this drop down menu and go to effect options, here I have this option called animate text. When I click on the drop down menu, I see that I can have the animation happen by word or by letter. Now this option might light up the face of a beginner and if the beginner thinks that he is going to get the animation happening one word at a time, he'll be disappointed. Let us select by word and let me show you what happens when I say OK and go to slideshow. On a click, you can see that pretty much all the animation seems to happen simultaneously. Where is the promise of PowerPoint that says that the animation will happen by word? Let me show you where the issue is. When I go to the same drop down menu and go to effect options, you can see that PowerPoint has applied its own mind and introduced this number here called percentage delay between words and it is applied only as 10%. Now you need to somehow have the intuition to know that something like this would happen and therefore you need to go to this option and put it as 100% and then say OK. Now you can see that the animation happens by word. So if you are not an insider, there is a high possibility that you might get frustration with some of the most basic options available in PowerPoint. If you want to learn PowerPoint the right way and avoid all those frustrations, then I highly recommend that you take a look at our complete PowerPoint foundation course. The course will help you master the fundamentals of PowerPoint from scratch and will help you tame the beast and become a PowerPoint go-to guy in your workplace. So go ahead, click on the link in the description box below the video and take a look at our complete PowerPoint foundation course. In the meantime, do you want to learn some simple and creative PowerPoint ideas you can use in your next presentation? Then click on the link here to join our five day free email course called 25 creative PowerPoint ideas. These are simple, quick and useful PowerPoint ideas I have not shared elsewhere. So go ahead, click on the link Join the course and I will see you inside.